Hi students, this is session 6 of Getting to Know Plants, the last session of Getting to Know Plants. As you know that we discussed about the shoot system. What is the shoot system students? Yes, all parts of the plant that are above the crown form the shoot system which includes stems, leaves, flowers, fruits etc. So we discussed about some of the parts of the plant which form the shoot system and we will continue this shoot system. We will discuss about other parts of the plant which are very important part of the plant. So let us start with today's session and learn more about the shoot system. Flowers, fruits and seeds. So another component of the shoot system, another part of the shoot system of a plant is the flower. We know that the flower is responsible for seed development and reproduction of the plant. So there are main flower parts in the plants and they are sepals, petals, stamens and carpels. So all of these parts, the flower parts, out of all these is the stamen which is the male portion of the plant and the carpel which is considered to be the female portion of the plant. So now let us discuss about this reproductive organ of a plant, a flower. So what do we call a flower? Yes, a flower is the reproductive organ of a plant. Now here you can see a beautiful picture, the diagrammatic representation of a typical flower. The first part here we can see is the petal. So what are petals? Yes, they are colorful structures that surround the inner parts of the flower. Now here you can see how beautifully it covers the inner parts of the flower. Then it is the stigma. Then comes the style. Stigma is present over here on the tip. And this is the style which connects it, which connects the stigma to the ovary. So it is a tube like structure. Then comes the sepal. Sepals are green leaf like structures at the base of the flower. Here it is the base of the flower. You can see here this is considered to be the base of the flower. Right? So sepals are green leaf like structures which are present at the base of the flower and they protect the flower during its development and support the petals when the flower blooms. After that comes the stalk. This is the stalk which attaches the whole plant, which attaches this flower to the other part of the plant. Then comes the stamen. Stamen consists of anther and filament. Here you can see that stamen, these stamens are the male reproductive parts of the flower and each stamen has two parts, a thin stalk, this is a thin stalk called filament and a knob-like structure present on the tip of this filament is anther. The anther produces a powdery substance called pollen. So it is this anther which produces a powdery substance called pollen. P O L L E N pollen. pollen. Right? So these are the beautiful parts of a flower. This is ovary, and ovary consists of many ovules inside it. So always remember that. 
stigma, style and ovary. These three comes under one important part of the plant which is considered to be the female reproductive part of the flower called as carpel. So what we can say about carpel or pistil? Carpel or pistil is the female reproductive part of the flower and it has three parts. A sticky top portion called stigma, an enlarged base called ovary. This is the enlarged base which is attached with the sepal called ovary and a stalk called style. So stigma, style and ovary these are the main three parts of a carpel, female reproductive part of the flower. So this stalk which is called as style connects the stigma and ovary and the ovary contains tiny balls like structures inside it known as or called as ovules which later on become seeds. So these all are the beautiful parts of flower. So let us now discuss more about it. Yes, petals are colorful structures that surround the inner parts of the flower. Carpel or crystal is the female reproductive part of the flower. It has three parts, a sticky top portion called stigma, an enlarged base called ovary and a stalk called a style that connects these two, stigma and ovary. And the ovary contains tiny ball like structures called ovules which later on become seeds. Then comes the sepals which are green in color, leaf like structure at the base of the flower which protect the flower during its development and support supports the petals when the flower blooms. After that comes the stamens which are the male reproductive parts of the flower and each stamen has two parts a thin stalk called filament and a knob like structure called anther and the anther produces a powdery substance called pollen which we discussed. So basically these all are the paths of a flower. So when ovule becomes fertilized it develops into a seed. Right? Ovules are present in the structure which is present at the which is located at the base of the carpel that protects or houses the ovule or egg which is called ovary. So this ovary which surrounds the seed becomes the fruit and flowers that contain both stamens and carpels means stamens means the male reproductive part of the flower and carpels means the female reproductive part of the flower. So this male and reproductive uh, male and female reproductive part of the flower are very important. So flowers that contain both stamens and carpels are called perfect flowers. Flowers that are missing either stamens or carpels are called imperfect flowers. Means if a flower contains all the four main parts, that is sepals, petals, stamens and carpels, it is called a complete flower. So we saw that the petals are among the most distinctive parts of the flower. They have a much more important function than simply looking beautiful. The bright colors of the petals are what attract bees to the flower. Bees are needed to collect the pollen and spread it to other flowers in the flower's way of reproduction. So without bees, there is no fertilization or without such insects, there is no fertilization and any flower species that lacks the ability to attract them is short-lived indeed. So petals form a very important part, even sepals which are small green petal like structures that are often seen surrounding the petals. So when the flower is a bud, it is protected by the sepals and when the flower opens or blooms, 
the sepals from, form the point where the petals are attached to each other and the structures within the flower petals. Even the stamen and the carpel. The carpel is the female part of the flower which is consisting of three parts, sigma, style and ovary. The top of the pistil is the stigma which receives the pollen from the bee or other insect that transfers the pollen and the style connects the stigma to the ovary which is the portion of the flower that is fertilized by the pollen. And after fertilization, the fruit or seed grows within the ovule. So flowers may have one or more than one ovule. Even the semen, it forms, it is the male portion of the flower. Most flowers have six stamens arranged inside the corolla. Corolla means the petals of the flower. And the stamen is made up of stalk called the filament and the structure on the end or, or on its tip called the anther. So the pollen is released from the anther where it is spread by insects, wind or water and then the fertilization takes place. So for a flower to develop into fruit the pollen grains must be transferred from its anthers to the stigma. So this is a very important thing. For a flower to develop into a fruit and form seeds, pollen grains must be transferred from its anthers to the stigma. Means anther, which is a part of the male reproductive organ of the flower, to the stigma, which is stigma, which is the female reproductive part of the flower. Right? So, what do we call this? The transfer of these pollen grains? Yes, there is a term known as pollination. You might have heard about it. Or you haven't? Then let us discuss about it. Yes, pollination. The transfer of pollen grains from an anther to a stigma means anther means male part to a stigma of a male part is called pollination. So there are many flowers which are brightly colored and have a sweet smell to attract insects such as bees, butterfly etc. So always remember that pollination is possible by wind, water or such type of insects through which the transfer of pollen grains from an anther to a stigma takes place. So what happens when the insect or the bee, here we take an example of a bee, when it sits on the flower. Sorry, this is not the, this is an insect. Right, so when an insect sits on the flower, the pollen grains stick to its body and may be rubbed off when it reaches other flowers. So in turn, what happens? Pollination occurs. Right? So here it is beautiful diagrammatic representation of pollination where insects act as pollinating agents. Remember that not all photosynthetic plants appear green in color. So there are some plants such as coleus in which the green color is masked by other pigments and then the pollination takes place in such plants. So remember that a flower is a leafy shoot containing the sexual organs of a flowering plant. It is adapted for sexual reproduction and it is composed of four sets of modified leaves like carpel, stamen, petal and sepal. So carpel is the female part of the flower which consists of stigma, style and ovary. Stigma collects the pollen. Here stigma this is not considered as, this alone is not considered as pistil. You know, we cannot say that this alone is a pistil, but we can say 
that this whole portion this whole portion is a carpal or piston because this the tip is the stigma this is the style and this is the ovary which has ovules tiny structures or ball like structures which has ovules or we also call it as eggs so eggs or ovules that means one and the same right so stigma style and ovary are the three main parts of a pistil or carpel right here is anther which is produced from from where it is produced anther is the pollen uh, from which the pollen is produced so we can say that stigma collects the pollen from the pollinating agent or any insect here we consider bee a honey bee an insect or wind so it collects the pollen from the pollinating agent stigma collects the pollen from the pollinating agent and chemically stimulates the pollen germination while the style style positions the stigma for effective pollen collection and ovary is the site of fertilization which protects the developing seeds which aids in seed dispersion whereas stamen it is the male part of the flower in which the anther and filament are very important anther brings about the pollen formation and releases the pollen it releases the pollen and filament positions the anther for effective pickup this is the filament so this filament positions the anther for effective pickup of pollen by the pollinating agent like a bee and petal it attracts insect pollinators by color food reward and fragrance while the sepal protects the flower bud and support the petals of the open flower or the bloomed flower so remember that there are the adaptations of insect pollinated flowers like they attract pollinators by brightly colored petals petal shape pollen or nectar or fragrance so these are some of the chemicals which are released into the air and pollen collection is then followed by the insects like bees what will happen that this bee will fly on to this flower and a pollen will stick to the insect which stays in contact with anther until insect arrives then pollen capture by flower takes place where sticky stigmas so that pollen from the insect will transfer it to them now when this bee flies to another flower where stigma is present which is the sticky top portion of the female part that is carpel or pistil what happens that pollen collection is done by wind very smoothly which is uh, easily removed from anther and this small pollen easily is transported by wind as well as from by bees so pollination can take place by insect by wind and by water so pollination is a very important step over here because it leads to the creation of new seeds that grow into new plants but how it works it all begins in the flower flowering plants have several different parts that are important in pollination right so to be pollinated pollen must be moved from its stamen to the stigma when pollen from the plant stamen is transferred to that same plant stigma it is called self pollination because it is occurring only in one flower but here we are discussing an example of cross pollination means cross pollination means it occurs from one flower to a different flower not the same flower right so how does this pollen from one plant get moved to another yes it can be removed by or it can be transferred by insects like when animals such as bees butterflies moths flies and hummingbirds pollinate plants it's accidental 
so they are not trying to pollinate the plant usually they are at the plant to get food but the sticky pollen or a sweet nectar made at the base of the petals stick to them so when feeding the animals accidentally rub against the stamens and they get pollen stuck all over themselves so whenever they move to another flower to feed then some of the pollen can rub off onto this new plant stigma and finally plants that are pollinated by these animals or insects often are brightly colored and have a strong smell to attract the animal pollinators so another way plants are pollinated is by wind and water so since they do not need to attract animal pollinators they can be dully colored or unscented so insects pollinate those flowers which are brightly colored and in this way pollination takes place so i hope you are clear with this term pollination yes so what hap happens after pollination yes let us now discuss about seed after pollination the ovules change into seeds they become seeds as seeds form the ovary swells and changes into a fruit the ovary the structure which we saw what is ovary yes it is the very main part important part of carpel or pistil right the ovary contains tiny ball like structures called as ovules which later on become seeds right so if it gets sufficient water air and warmth a seed will produce a baby plant so what is the seed the seed is a modified ovule which is produced after the fertilization of the ovule so it protects the dormant embryo and it nourishes it during its development and germination right so to study the characteristic structure of the seed it is soaked in water for about 12 to 24 hours and the seed usually consists of many parts right so here we can see that there are seeds which are present inside a pear same way there are many such fruits in which seeds are present like in tomato in apple in papaya in watermelon so what we can say about seeds yes the ovules change or become seeds as seeds form the ovary swells and changes into a or becomes a fruit right so here we will now discuss about the structure of a bean seed yes this is the structure of the bean seed this is the outer side of the bean seed which looks like this and this is the inner side of the bean of a bean seed right so a bean seed is flat it is kidney shaped having a notch on one side here you can see this is called as a hole and there is long white scar along this hole so the seed is attached to the inner margin of fruit and a small pore is also located at this end so what happens that the seed imbibes water through this pore through the pore which is present with the hole when soaked in water or in moist soil so when the seed is soaked for a sufficiently long time and pressed gently after thereafter the embryo comes out breaking through the seed coats this is the seed coat the outer protective cover of the seed so in the bean seed there are two seed coats that develop and protect the embryo this embryo which is present inside the bean seed so this outer seed coat is thick it is leathery and relatively strong and there is one inner seed coat which is thin and membranous it is less united and then comes the inner seed inner side of a bean seed which consists of the embryo and cotyledon so embryo is the juvenile form of the plant it remains protected in the seed 
and the embryo consists of two cotyledons that enclose an embryo axis. This is just one structure, but there are basically two structures or the two cotyledons that enclose an embryo. So what happens? That embryo consists of two cotyledons. So there are two cotyledons in a bean seed. They are fleshy due to stored food therein. They are connected with each other along with the embryo. And the stored food is in the form of protein and starch grains. What are they? The stored food or the cotyledons. They are, this is in the form of proteins and starch grains. Right, so since the cotyledons completely enclose this nutritive, nutritive part during the embryonic development and become fleshy, there is no separate existence of this inner side of the bean seed. Hence, we can say that cotyledons play a very important role they, because they contain food for the baby plant. An embryo contains a young root. Here you can see this is the young root. So it contains the young root and a shoot which develops into a baby plant later on. And here it is the hole which allows water to enter the seed and here is the seed coat which protects the embryo. So seed coat, hole, embryo and cotyledon all are the main parts of this or all form the structure of a bean seed which play a very important role for the reproduction of a new bean seed or new plant, a baby plant which develops from this bean seed. Right? So that was all about the structure of a seed. So we discussed about all the parts which form, all the parts of the plant which form the shoot system. So do remember that shoot system includes stems, leaves, flowers, roots, etc. Right? I would like to share some of the plant facts with you that there are around 2000 different types of plants which are used by humans to make food and there are over 200,000 identified plant species and the list is growing all the time. There are some plants which are carnivores which gain nutrients by eating various small insects and spiders and a well-known example of a carnivorous plant is Venus flytrap. You will be very amazed to know that bamboo plant can be a fast growing plant because some types of bamboo can grow almost a meter in just one day. So these are some of the plant facts which you should know. So that was all about the flowers, fruits and seeds which form the shoot system. So we discussed about all the parts of a plant and I hope you enjoyed today's session learning about the shoot system. So we will meet in the next session with a new lesson. Till then, keep enjoying. See you.